Welcome! Today's video we're gonna talk about microdosing. What is microdosing magic mushrooms? How to microdose for parties? How to microdose for therapeutic uses? How much to take? What are the side effects? How to do it? Everything you need to know about microdosing. So tune in and welcome. My name is Jessica. This video is part of a series of videos on mushrooms. So there are seven total videos on fungi, what they are, macrodoses, hero's journey, and all of it. So this is one video of this series. I'm excited today to talk about microdoses. So please subscribe so more people can watch these videos and also share with your friends. And disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only and magic mushrooms are not legal in certain places. All right, microdosing. So what does Mike Tyson and Prince Harry have in common? You guessed it, their love for mushrooms. So if you Google it, you will see a lot of celebrities. They're talking about it. Obviously, as I said, it's not legal everywhere. So a lot of people are not talking about it, but I guarantee you everybody's doing it. So today we're gonna dive deeper on what is microdosing. So a microdose is a small dose of something, duh. Right, so a microdose of magic mushrooms is about 300 milligrams or 0.3 grams of dry magic mushrooms, which are mushrooms containing psilocybin. So a microdose can be from anywhere to 100 to 300 milligrams. When it also comes to mushroom, it's better to start slow and go slow and then get acquainted. So a microdose is really a great way for you to get familiar with the medicine and see how it works for your body. Okay, so why microdosing? Microdosing can be used for two reasons. One of the most popular reasons is for party or for fun and social settings. Uh, nowadays, we all know that alcohol is extremely bad for you. So a lot of people are tuning into microdosing just to be social, connect with their loved ones and be chill without any known side effects. Or you can take it for therapeutic uses. You can take it as you would take coffee in the morning, right? Like you drink coffee and you just feel a little bit more energetic. You feel calmer, but you feel like more grounded. You feel ready to work if you're ready to do it or maybe you have a glass of wine on the weekends so a microdose is going to be a small substensorial dose so you're not going to see elephants you're not going to feel anything but it's going to be something that is going to be there and you're like oh feel good today and that's all you're going to feel at best right so let's say you decided to start microdosing so how and when to do it so do it every day on an empty stomach it's important to be consistent with your dosing and take it every day on an empty stomach why on an empty stomach because if you take it with food psilocybin can get trapped in the food and then it will not absorb so maybe it will absorb but not the way you want it it would take forever and you know like when you take a supplement or a vitamin they say Take it with food, take it out with food and sort of things. So mushrooms for sure, you wanna take it on an empty stomach to increase absorption, period. So I recommend microdose every morning when you wake up, like you take your cup of coffee and you just have a great day, right? But some people feel nausea. Why do some people feel nausea? It's very rare that you feel nausea on a microdose, but some people do. So why do people feel nausea? Because of a substance in mushrooms, all mushrooms called chitin. So chitin is fibrous and, and this is hard to digest. It's kind of think of yourself as eating grass, right? Like it's just difficult. So then the stomach's trying to digest and then you feel nausea. So if you feel nausea, first of all, I wouldn't think too much because if the mind is like, I'm on mushrooms, I'm gonna feel nausea, then you probably will feel nausea. So forget about the nausea, but if, if you do have it, to feel nausea, then know that it's because of chitin and it's all good. So all you wanna do is take it with ginger tea, peppermint tea, or then in that case, some food may help alleviate the nausea. Also chocolates, because chocolates, they have the fat, which helps to get it in your bloodstream. The fat helps. And also chocolate has been used as an ancient medicine. Chocolate has a ton of other compounds. They're very good for you nonetheless. So if you're taking high quality chocolate with high quality organic mushrooms together, that is the ideal compound. So regardless when you're taking it, mushrooms are water soluble. So remember to take Take a full cup of water to really absorb it and get those compounds in for you to really feel it and get it on your system. So how does microdosing works? actually works? Here's the science of it. 
magic mushrooms contain psilocybin. So when you take magic mushrooms inside your body, your body's enzyme converts it to psilocin. And psilocin is the thing, it's a chemical that your brain, that it kind of plays in your body in the same receptors of serotonin. So when you take magic mushrooms, your brain reads it as you're taking a serotonin. It plays on the same neuroreceptor, which is called 5-HT2A receptor. So that's where psilocin, let's say this is psilocin, that's the 5-H2A receptor, and they, they link up together. So essentially, your body thinks that you're taking like MDMA or serotonin or something really good happen to you because it plays with those same feel-good receptors. So once it does that, what has actually happened? What it happens, and to be honest, mostly in bigger doses, but what it happens if you take it over time is going to play a big part in down-regulating your default mode network. Okay, what's your default mode network? As I said in other videos, the default mode network is an area in your brain responsible for overthinking, like anxiety, stress, is very active in the modern society today. So when you take it, it's like a mix of all the great things because it makes you energetic, but at the same time makes you calm and grounded. With any mushrooms, it's very important that you take care of set and setting. On a microdose again there's no problem on a microdose because it's such a small dose but generally speaking you want to think about where are you eating with who you're eating it and over time if you are consistent with your microdose it will also play a part in your neuroplasticity which is as i've explained in the other videos that you can watch on the series neuroplasticity is the ability for your brain cells to start connecting in a different way so if i take it every day and then i, I have a practice like yoga meditation therapy journaling coaching or i'm trying to learn a new skill i am learning something that together like it helps your brain to do the thing you need to do because it starts playing on your on your neurons and start shaping them in the way you want to be. So I already said take it every day, blah blah blah, but really when to take it, how to take it. So there are things called microdosing protocols. So different people, they, they've done different protocols. So there's a protocol called the Fetiman protocol, which is to take it every three days. So on the third day you take it, there is the Stemis protocol, which is to take for four days and give a break for three days, which is, let's say my biggest thing is like on the weekends when I'm social, when I'm with friends. So I'm gonna take it Thursday, to Sunday or I need it for work I need it to get shit done during the week so I'm gonna take it Monday through Thursday so you can either take it like regularly every day or consistently over time to work on your mental health your anxiety or you want to take it as needed for fun to see your friends and what I do want to say is microdosing has incredible incredible benefits but you must be consistent. So every day you go and you brush your teeth. You go a couple times a week and you go to the gym, right? So you want a mental floss by taking the micro doses. It's very important that you are consistent with it over time. I recommend three months of consistency, micro dosing, and you pick your protocol. So let's say I'm gonna take it every other day, or I'm gonna take it four days on, four days off, or every third day, right? Whatever is your protocol, you're gonna choose it and then you're gonna stick with it just like you stick with the gym with brushing your teeth and you're gonna do it consistently and I guarantee you there is nothing out there that is as great and as natural and as no side effects as microdosing magic mushrooms so of course we can talk about side effects right there's really isn't any side effects specifically not to microdosing is such a small dose that nothing but generally as I've said, they kind of like the research says that if you have some sort of severe mental illness in your family, like schizophrenia and such, it's better to, to stay away. But, you know, still up for debate there. But, okay, who shouldn't take? It's more like, it's not like who shouldn't take, it's more like when it may not work because everyone can take but but sometimes it will not work when will it not work weed users or marijuana so when you take a lot of weed or or certain drugs like sleep medicine or something your brain like your 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 receptors your your neuron receptors they're kind of like beat up 
right? You've been like giving it a lot of stimuli, a lot of something, right? So it's kind of like if every day I watch a movie, I watch a great movie. At some point, there isn't really a movie that's gonna, you know, move me. It's the same for your brain. So if you're giving your brain weed, weed, you're essentially desensitizing your brain cells. So for weed users, it's very difficult that they can like feel the mushrooms, right? And get the full benefits because their brain is desensitized. But it's not a problem. There isn't like a problem. The only thing is you might not feel it. What I always recommend is doing a full weed detox or, or any substance detox before starting on mushrooms. So you can really feel it. So if you're a weed user and you're realizing that weed is not your thing, then detox from weed, stop taking it, and then try microdosing. You'll see how it goes. Another very worth mentioning is SSRIs, or known as antidepressants, because as I would explain in another video, SSRIs, they also work with your serotonin receptors, your, your brain cells. So I'll keep doing this, but this is supposed to be a receptor, right? But when your serotonin receptors Receptors, they are also numb and blocked and, and all of that by the SSRIs. Like I said, the mushrooms, they also work on your serotonin receptor. So they'll be competing for the receptor. So you might not really feel anything. And were to mention some doctors, they talk about serotonin syndrome, which is if you're taking too much serotonin. So you're already taking the antidepressant and then you're taking the mushrooms. And I don't think that's a problem, but again, worth mentioning it. My story is that yes, I was taking SSRIs, antidepressants for six months and I was married and I was super unhappy and I was as flat as any wall. And so yes, I started microdosing when I was on antidepressants and my life never been better. So I don't know, that's my anecdotal experience. Of course, you have to see for yourself, do it safely, see how it goes. And then we have formats. So what is better, to eat an orange or to take the equivalent of an orange in a pill? Obviously, for many reasons, is to eat the orange. So same idea for the mushrooms. And I love mushrooms, and I think a lot of people are loving mushrooms because of this natural aspect from them. They literally are natural, and unlike many other things, you don't need to process them in any ways. You can just eat it as you go. But for microdosing and for always I say know your dosage. So that's why capsules or other formats that's not just eating the mushrooms, right? It's very important. So I, I recommend uh, taking them in capsules, more natural like that. And this is like, this is a, is an immune blend. It's not magic, but this is like about 500 milligrams. And usually the blends of magic mushrooms, they're mixed with some lion's mane. So this is like the grinded, mushroom and you take it in capsule you can take it in chocolate as i said the fat helps and, and there's some gummies but it's very important to know your dosage like read the packaging see how much you're taking and take it every day be consistent with it choose a brand be aware of fake mushrooms there are so many fake mushrooms in the market what are fake mushrooms they're synthetic mushrooms so there's this i forgot the name now but they make them in a lab and it's bad disgusting ridiculous they put it everywhere that's why you can buy them for like 30 bucks but it's synthetic mushrooms as well as other synthetic products so you want to choose organic mushrooms and, and then you want to really understand like what are you taking so you take it and you'll be fine so to recap Microdosing is 300 milligrams or less of dry magic mushrooms, which are mushrooms who contain psilocybin. A microdose can be part of a specific therapeutic protocol, which is every other day or every four days or sporadically as you want it. It's important to take breaks so the brain doesn't create tolerance, right? So that's why we don't take it every day. We take it four days out of the week or every other day for three months. And then after three months, you take a break. Always microdose on an empty stomach for better absorption. Other drugs and substances like weeds, sleep meds, stimulants like Adderall or SSRIs may diminish the effect of your microdose. 
microdose is really, really safe. There isn't really any research or anything saying it's not safe or there's a problem with it. Like I said, it's a really small dose and it's really no problem. I think the worst problem you can have is nausea, which we know if I wasn't clear, also I think I forgot to say that, but if you're experiencing nausea, you can also uh, drink an acid with it. So there's a thing called lemon tacking, which is just you can put the actual mushroom in lemon and the acid will help it break it down. Or when you take the mushroom, you can drink like a cup of orange juice or, or lemon juice. So, and yes, there's a lot of bad synthetic mushrooms out there. So always buy or source it from somebody, you know, like with literally like with anything else, right? You want like your fruit to be organic, pesticide free you, from a local farm, right? So same with mushrooms. So please comment any questions that I didn't answer and watch the other videos on mushrooms. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for watching. See you soon.